Welcome back to the news today. This is the daily debate election 2015. Most of last week's Israeli political headlines focused on the new scandal concerning the prime minister's household expenses. On one hand, the negative publicity could harm Netanyahu politically. But on the other hand, it keeps the prime minister in the headlines while the other candidates are brushed aside. Our weekly poll shows that effect the scandals had on Netanyahu ruling Likud party. And with me is Amir Oren, defense and government analyst for our daily newspaper. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. And also professor of political science, Dr. Hani Zubeda. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. And also professor Avi Dugani, president of geocartography knowledge. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Is it a good evening? You tell me. Let's uh, hear the results. You're coming here with the new poll, I-24 News poll, and the results are really surprising this week. Well, it didn't surprise me. Did it surprise no. you? Because you're predicting everything. We call Let's it a see. The pattern. The pattern is the similar. Pattern. Let's see. The Likud party are with is with 27 seats. The Zionist Union 23. The Joint List 12. The Jewish Home 11. The Yeshatid party 11. Going up from last week. Kulanu nine seats, and we will see the rest of the result right now. Israel Beitenu is seven seats. United Torah Judaism, seven seats, together with five seats. Merits with four seats and Shas with four seats. Merits and Shas in really, really big troubles. Uh, let's say this is the Likud party. Like if, if, if Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was watching us right now, he can be really, 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 like he can cool down. I just spoke with somebody in his own campaign and mm -hmm. they said, Bibi is well to do and relaxed. He's relaxed. That was, that was the official. That was the official message we got from his uh, campaign. He's well to do and relaxed. Well, what he, can you? Let's try to analyze. He, he can be relaxed because you know, little touches him, because we, we spoke about it in the past that people who vote are Likud, belong firstly to those who admire Bibi. They don't don't add by admiring the man. They think that no one can replace him. Then comes the idealism. They are the only idealistic party in this particular country, really idealistic. So they go on with the Likud, they go on therefore with Bibi, and nothing that's being said against him can make them change their mind and not vote for the Likud, or oh, very, very little. Thus, they support his going to Washington, they support everything that he does. And when speak, people speak against, they say, well, again, they speak against. They vote for him or they vote because they are traditional Likud voters and they cannot vote for someone else? Well, for them, it's, it's quite the same. For them, it's quite the same. The man and the Likud and the ideology and, the, and being faithful to the family because my mother, my father, everyone was voting Likud. This is with them. And their number doesn't change very much. I, I may remind you that 27 mandates he had before the elections before. Why couldn't he come back? And well, he's stable, rather stable. On the other hand, when you go to the uh, union, the Zionist union, uh, they are in trouble now. Big trouble. They, are, like they have a weak campaign. They fear it. They try to change it. They hire a person to change it. Uh, they don't know really how to present Sipi and so on. Altogether, they are not in a very good situation at this particular moment. Tomorrow is another day. As the only two prof non-professors here, uh, both of us can he's rely. Trying to, he's trying to form a coalition. <coughs> he's forming a coalition. Right. I'm not a professor. <laughs> we can rely on uh, feminine intuition. Both yes. Of us. And so you're asking what my feminine intuition is telling me? I was going to say <laughs> rather than ask. Okay. But but um, uh, if I should uh, remind uh, the other uh, guests. Uh, Netanyahu lost in 1999, even though uh, the voters, fathers and mothers and all of that yes. were still. And in uh, 2006, he only got 12, 12 seats. seats. Of course, there were circumstances in each case, but nevertheless, he's not invincible. Um, the feeling one gets when one walks the streets of Tel Aviv, one goes to the uh, Akamel market and talks to the merchants, uh, many of whom are Likud stalwarts, is that Netanyahu has not lost his base, but the support is soft. And some people, um, in uh, response to uh, the uh, questions you and your colleagues uh, present them with, say, yes, we will vote for him. 
but at the last moment may feel ashamed because there are more revelations coming in the next three weeks. The, there is going to be a criminal investigation. They will not be proud of themselves in leaving their homes and voting for Netanyahu. Now, they may not shift their votes to anyone else, but they may stay at home and may not follow their own advice from the last campaigns. Yes. Okay. Tell me. So, I, I feel you. Yes. No, so here goes. I feel you too, Lucy. I'm very <laughs> sorry. I felt you last week when you asked me the question. Yes. And I said, well, let, let, let's, let's put it as simple as can be. He is the incumbent. There is a huge advantage to incumbency. We cannot put it in words or we cannot account for it in statistics, <clears throat> but we see it in the polls. There is a pattern, the incumbent pattern. If the campaign is lousy, the incumbent wins. If he has a brilliant campaign, the incumbent wins. The only way the incumbent loses in Israel is if he has a crappy campaign, pardon my French, and his opponent has a brilliant campaign, which is not materializing right now. In the last week, what we see, and we'll see more and more of it, we call it political cannibalizing. We have cannibalization. The, um, the uh, uh, Zionist camp is literally cannibalizing merits. It's this is what it. they're doing. They are destroying merits, which is stupid by them, because what they're doing is they're maintaining 23 seats. I assume 20 to 23. But the extra seats or they're trying or the, the ability to maintain their numbers is dependent upon the fact that merits is dropping down from eight to four, which means merits might not be in the next Knesset. Do you, uh, this is unbelievable because we see not only that merits might not be in the... But we just sat here and we said that uh, the genius campaign came from Shas, but we're seeing that yeah, this genius campaign is not helping Shas and it's finding it itself actually maybe outside of the Knesset in this and coming election. You know, it's a matter of fact that even the Arabs do not support merits at this particular point, but with a well, half, they have half, a half, percent, yes. half percent. Yeah, they have a great list. And not they only that, not only that. Still, 9% of the Arab population have voted yesterday, okay? Yeah. Have voted for Jewish uh, uh, also parties. Also for Shah's party. Well, 53 voted for the Rishima, for the uh, United, uh, for United, the United yeah, list. Yes. And 9% voted, distributed for five Israeli uh, parties. Uh, the merits was in the very last, at the very end. The Likud got 1%, uh, Meretz got uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. How come? How come? Is it because, what, the Arabs, uh, the Arab community in Israel lost the faith in the left in Israel? Because usually we used to see a lot of Arabs voting for Shas because of the economic uh, yes, situation. Yes. And voting for the left, which is the Labour Party, because of maybe the political uh, yeah. situation of the Palestinians-Israeli conflict. Now, yeah. what? As They're many not as two <laughs> mandates or three. Yes. The yeah. Arabs would contribute but, to the But you know, ma whatever. many years ago, when Mapai, the old Labour Party, was in power, there were uh, mapai allied. Uh, Arab lists, and uh, many of the Arabs in the Galilee and elsewhere thought that they are going um, to be on the good side of the regime by voting uh, for these Mapai allied uh, list or Mapam uh, allied list. Um, right now, what is happening is that the prospect of uh, a big showing by the uh, United List. 12, 14, maybe even more, depending uh, on the uh, on the turnout in the in the polls. Uh, this means that they may get more leverage by voting for their own list, which later, even if they don't join the coalition, might get very good positions in the Knesset, such as the uh, Committee on Interior. You mean affairs. the United List? The United, the United list. Arab List. So, so why, why vote for merits, which has <laughs> many other issues? Um, uh, rather than vote uh, for your own list? Yeah, yeah, well, well, By the way, they, they came up from 56 to 62 at this moment because yes, it's 53 plus 9 yeah. who, who actually voted. Yeah. Um, there, there is, um, l let me just put the limelight on another issue. Um, um, Kahlon is starting with um, a sort of negative campaign, cannibalizing the center. He's cannibalizing Yesh Atid. Against Lapid. Yes, the first which, time which that we're yesterday, saying yes, yesterday he came out full force. He, he literally... Actually, it was the first time that somebody is attacking yes. uh, Yair yes. Lapid in this it's campaign. It's not the last. 
it's not the last, and, and we've just we've only just begun. Um, what I foresee is Lieberman to start cannibalizing in the center as well. I see um, Yeshatid, Kulanu, and the Jewish home starting to cannibalize each other because they're working on the same, what we call prospectus voters. And there's one more very interesting issue, and that is the fact that what we see, regardless of what happens, the Arab list is the most stable list in this pre-election polls, which means that the Arabs has well, they literally understood They're that for the first their time, place yes. as the, thir the biggest third, like the, the biggest party, like the, the third, third largest, largest yeah, party, largest party in, in the Israeli the political system, which means, which means eventually, if some sort of a bloc will form, regardless whether they'll be in the coalition, they will be the heads of the opposition which nobody pays attention to, but in Israel, the head of the opposition is a huge position which allocates at least three committees in the Knesset for the opposition nomination, which means for the first time in Israel, we'll have an Arab person nominating three heads of committees in Israel. Which means and prime that minister in has to report to them. To the yes, yes, of course. Especially in a, in a war time, uh, they, he needs to go and actually have uh, some kind a of quorum. a yeah, a But th quorum. that might be a problem because they might always argue the necessary evil that some issues might not be revealed I don't know to what is surprising to you. Arabs against Jews and the government? Because yeah. it's not in the Israeli society? Let's have it in a formal way. No, no, it will it, be more it, interesting. It, no, it has to do with the reluctance uh, of Arab members of Knesset uh, to serve on the Defense and Foreign yeah. Affairs Committee. They don't want to be exposed to state secrets, and they don't want to be held accountable to yes. whatever the government the military, does. Militarily. Yeah, the military is... But, but uh, Hani's point uh, is well taken, because the position of the head of the opposition is a state position. He is going to be guarded by Shabak bodyguards. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He has, he has a monthly yes. interview with the prime minister yes. in which he is supposed to be privy to all the secrets. And so I'm, I love he this needs idea. to be briefed. I'm I'm nobody Audi, pays I'm attention Audi, to that. Get this I, nobody I pays attention to that. And he wouldn't tell me his secrets before the interview, so I didn't tell him my secret. But right now, as it stands, it seems like I have waited, but I think this is long enough. Nobody's really reaching the 12, 13 seats, not the Jewish home and not Yeshatid, and they will start cannibalizing each other. And I think the Likud will go forcibly into the Jewish home party. They would like to put them under the 10 seats so they'd be able to come with more strength to the coalition, which means if the Arab party just maintains the 12 seats in case of a national unity government, and the Zionist camp goes with the Likud, we will have head of an opposition which comes from an Arab party. This we didn't like see maybe at the beginning Nobody of Nobody did, this. but uh, we need to... And if instead of 62 voting on the Arab side today, 72 will, as they say in the last poll, uh, my last poll, if they do this, then we come up to 14 mandates or so. Yeah, but then Let's there's a huge issue because uh, Sheikh Raid, well, the North Muslim unity, is not going to back or support, not even quietly, um, higher voting percentiles within the Arab community. I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> I just want to understand, uh, honey, <laughs> I, want, I want to understand the difference uh, between the, the polls that uh, we are seeing. Because uh, some other polls in the Israeli media are showing that the, the, uni the, the Zionist uh, unity whatever, I'm almost saying the Zionist unity government, unity government. Uh, wait. Uh, wait, it will happen, is actually leading the poll. So what, from where these differences are coming? Well, I should say to you, I don't know. And all my speculations you don't want to hear. <laughs> but I would say politely that uh, we do things not the same way. We don't have the same information systems. Our sampling may not reach periphery, or some people's may not reach periphery. Uh, lots of things can be uh, behind us, between us, mm -hmm. and uh, I just have to believe in what I do. That's my, uh, and, you know, professor. I, th I think polite, polite answer. No, because you know yeah, the, the Zionist is, camp uh, know, will come and tell I've us, seen, uh, seen, uh, seen. well, you don't believe your uh, no, but, 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 just... Professor Degani and some, if not all of his colleagues, are faithfully reporting their findings, but some of those polled 
may not be so faithful in their responses. And there is no philograph, not only a polygraph, to find out whether they are truthful in their responses or for whatever reasons are, are so trying to... you're saying that they're putting their wishful thinking in the or, polls, or, which is very... Or like... any other way. Perhaps they are afraid of, of uh, the government and they are trying um, some uh, a slight uh, way to... To, uh, not to reveal their true position, or they don't even know what will happen three weeks from uh, now. Yeah, three also, weeks to the election, I assume that in about two and a half weeks, we will have a much better Four vote. weeks. So yeah. what, you, well, you went into weeks. your calendar to I see how many days calendar. we are to the I elections? I went into my calendar to see, because <laughs> what we do, what we do, well, and, and Professor Ghani probably knows that better than I do, um, we usually talk about the last week as the decision week, which we are so we well more, more in tune. I have to go out for it. All right. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much uh, for being welcome. with me this week. Of course, we will see you again with us. Two minutes, I'll be back.